Welcome back to The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Let's go a little bit back uh, in history. I'm uh, taking us back to 1967. Um, it was on this day that a very, very sad three years of uh, Nigerian history um, you know, took place. Uh, the start of the Nigerian Civil War, also called the Biafran War. It uh, started on this day in 1967. And of course, uh, this was as a result of other incidents that had taken place months earlier and a uh, fallout from the Aburi Accord, which had, of course, had taken place on the 4th and 5th of, uh, of uh, July in uh, 1967 also. The uh, Biafran War, of course, uh, the build-up had initially started on the 15th of July 1966 with the first coup um, led by Kaduna Nzogu and, of course, uh, other uh, military officers. It was termed the Igbo coup. Uh, and then there was a counter coup uh, later in the year in May or July, I believe, of 1966 also that, of course, uh, was called the counter coup, the reprisal uh, coup that led to the killing of um, Agui Ronsi and, and uh, Fadjui and a couple of other people. That was, uh, that, uh, was also led by, um, what's the name now, Theophilus Danjuma, Lushegon Basanjo and a couple of other people. Um, the chaos, of course, that ensued after that. Uh, the killings of uh, Igbos in the north, um, and um, the, what they call it, the program of Igbos in the north, and then eventually the Aburi Accord, which was meant to ensure some type of peace between both sides, the uh, southeastern side led by um, Ojuku and, of course, the northern or the Nigerian side. Um, that happened in Ghana in, on the 4th and 5th of July in 1967. But after that Aburi Accord, um, there were challenges with some sections of the Aburi Accord, I think section 70 and 71, and Ujuku had pointed out that these things were not part of the agreements that they had had, and it seemed like it was a, a totally different uh, draft that was put forward, uh, different from what they had ag agreed in Aburi. And with some of all these things, I think one of them was stating that, um, you know, a, a, a military administrator can declare... Um, state of emergency um, across certain states and when they do that they <coughs> take control of those states regardless of whoever their governors are and they can be in control of those states for as long as they choose and it was one of the things that Ojuku had pointed out that you know he didn't want as part of the Aburi Accord. Also the withdrawal of um, northern military officers from the southeast and the withdrawal of southeastern military officers from the north. Um, 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 Ojuku then also created or you know pointed out the way that he wanted uh, the country to be run and where their military to be placed at certain times. So those were some of the issues with the Aburi Accord. But with all of that, Ojuku declared uh, Biafra and of course uh, uh, Nigerians um, military attacked Biafra and that went on for about three years, 1967 all the way till the 15th of January in uh, 1970 when it was eventually called off. Three million lives were lost, uh, according to reports about three million Igbo lives um, um, were lost. Um, through the war and, of course, through a uh, um, shortage of food, there was, of course, uh, the uh, destruction of uh, certain bridges and a blockade, blockade of uh, food moving to the southeast. And those were some of the things that led to the starvation and the loss of that many lives. There was also the Asaba massacre. Um, for other aspects of all these conversations, people have also people from South South have also stated that the Biafran soldiers also carried out their own atrocities against um, you know people who were from the southeast and all of that. So well, anyway, it was a sad moment in Nigeria's history. Still is. The sad part for me also is the fact that since 1967, 1970, we still see some elements of that level of hatred and division in our country today in 2021. We still hear statements from the you know, administration and from people who should know better uh, that seem to point out those same divisions and still try to you know, divide the country even more. That, for me, is you know, the sad part of this conversation. Wow. The story of the Nigerian Civil War, um, questions about lessons, what have we learned? Because you still see um, the president alluding to that particular incident, mm -hmm. um, alluding to that particular event in history, and making threats. So it, it still seems that we haven't learned much from that, rather than the conversations being nationally about unity and peace, it seems otherwise. And, 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 and we just hope, really, that we can learn lessons from that and that, you know, the 2023 elections can be peaceful, you know, and we'll proceed um, in unity, love, peace, and oneness. And that the Yoruba man, the Hausa man, the Igbo man can appreciate the beauty in our diversity and just move along and get along as one great people.
And also, um, on oh, this no. day in history, on 5.30 a.m., on the 6th of July, 2013, what happened today was that Boko Haram terrorists marched into a boarding school in a place called Mamudu in Yobe State. They assembled students and staff of that school in story. a room. They threw explosives in there, and they basically killed those people. Some others died of gunshot wounds. It was a gory sight. You know, people saw... 42 bodies. All international groups condemned this. Just talk, talking about the United Nations, describing this as a terrorist attack, a very terrible situation. Parents struggled to identify their kids because they were burnt beyond recognition. Just imagine being assembled with your friends, your teachers in a room, and you know, boom, the fireworks go off and everybody's toast. It was a very sad day in Nigeria's history. And people at that time regarded that as a reprisal for you know a military attack on Boko Haram terrorists that had killed about 22 people um, just a few weeks before, and it was a third um, you know Boko Haram attack in, in recent time you know in those few weeks in the community in Borno State um, in Yobe State such a such a very terrible situation there a few months before in May. Um, the government of Good Luck Billy Jonathan had declared a state of emergency in Bonu, in Yobi, in Adamoa. That didn't help so much because we continue to see these attacks in states in northern Nigeria. And if anything, the Boko Haram terrorists, despite thoughts and statements from the presidency of them being decimated, we still see um, innings of them being even emboldened. And I mean, talking about today, many years later, 6th of July, um, 2021, we're talking about stories here about you know how Boko Haram um, reportedly attacked a school in Kaduna State and abducted about 140 persons, 140 students. Just no, really so sad. sad. Different times, uh, different tactics, um, you know, but still the same Boko Haram, still the same terrorism, still the same um, eye swap, bandits, kidnappers, um, you know, uh, d different names that they are being called, but they're still coming, you know, about the same atrocities. You're still hearing about, you know, villages being wiped out and people being killed in their numbers. And now it's spread across, not, you know, uh, Yobe. Uh, I think in 2013 and all that, I think it was Borneo and Yobe that were like the hot spots. Uh, but now it has gotten, you know, far, you know, beyond those areas. Um, and it's still a very, very sad moment. I remember the story very well. I remember also the uh, t the uh, stories that were shared by survivors and how yeah, insane it is. Yeah, there were five is. of them yeah. who also had gunshot wounds, yeah. yes. How insane it is, you know, that students who, or people who were in school were all rounded up um, and, and killed in their school. And those who tried to escape the, the burning of the building were shot, you know, outside. It's, it's just a really, really terrible time in Nigeria's history. Um, but um, I hope that we heal. A few people have said it, that Nigeria as a country needs healing. Not from just, you know, the suffering, but there's so much pain, so much pain um, that Nigeria as a country has, has experienced that the country needs healing, the country needs therapy. There's no way that we can just move on from some of these atrocities. I hope that there is, in the future, maybe another similar Oputa panel uh, that people can actually come out to express themselves and um, you know, some of these things can be spoken about again. Um, and we can, we can all come together as a country and you know, po point out one or two days as a day of national mourning for the lives that have been lost, the injustice. Um, the killings, the tears, the sadness, the pain that has been through Nigeria in the last decade. It is unimaginable. It can't even be, a, a, be described the level of pain that people have been through. Um, and the failure also of government to address this pain and address this injustice. Not long ago, a couple of days ago, we were speaking about a 14-year-old girl who was killed by a stray bullet. Uh, the Nigerian government has not even been able to take responsibility for the death of that Nigerian. They've not even been able to see her life as, in, as, as important enough, as, as valuable enough to take responsibility for her, her death, regardless of whatever explanation that they want to have, that, oh, maybe the bullet fell from the sky. Maybe, you know, someone was frying bullets next door and one of the bullets popped like popcorn and hit her. They've not been able to even take responsibility for that death. And that is the pain that I, I'm speaking about, the value of the Nigerian life that has been reduced to almost nothing. Nigeria needs therapy. You need serious therapy, and, and it, it, it's, it's, it's not stuff that we can, we can just talk about in the news and move on from. All right. We'll take a break here. Our first big conversation today would be about the Southern Governor's uh, meeting that occurred yesterday in Alausa, Lagos.